Hi and welcome to the Thurain channel. Today we're going to be looking at four different weapons lights. From the left here we have the Thurainite TW20, then we have the Olite Odin Mini, then we have the original Olite Odin, and then we have the Streamlight Protac HLX. All four of these lights would be great options for your rifles, but in today's video we're going to be comparing them to each other so you can get an idea of how they function, how they're going to mount, as well as what they look like at night. So first up here again is the Thrunite TW20. This one sells for $79.95 right now. This has a total max output of 2,532 lumens. This is running on an 18650 lithium ion battery. There's a charging port on the back right here. All right, to put your USB charging cable through. This has a pressure switch with a simple rail mount, all right, which is removable. Uh, and this has a Picatinny rail uh, mount that's attached to the light. This uh, mount also has an interchangeable piece on the bottom to make sure you have the correct thickness for the proper mount. To use this mount, it's very simple. All you have to do is unscrew the screw on the side. And if I zoom in here real quick, you can see that there is two ridges that stand up. So once you have this cranked down on top of the rail to ensure that it's nice and snug, you're going to take either a wide coin, something like a quarter, and put it in between the grooves to really crank that down or a large screwdriver. You want to make sure it's obviously could be very um, firmly attached to the rifle so it doesn't move around while you're shooting. Next up here is the Olight Odin Mini. These uh, sell for $139.95. This has a max output of 1250 lumens. This is running on an 18500 battery. All right, this also is rechargeable. To recharge it, you're going to remove the uh, light switch here by lifting up on that collar as you just saw. So just pop that back and then it's magnetic. All right. So to charge this, you're going to have the uh, magnetic USB cable. It's just going to magnetize to the bottom here and then plug it to a USB port. All right, put that back on. So this also has a pressure switch, all right, which can be mounted on any rail. And as far as the actual light being mounted, the uh, Olight Odin Mini only comes with the M-Lock mounts. All right, so if you want to get the Picatinny style mount, that is something you have to purchase separately. Uh, this mount is removable, which is very nice. All right, if I get a, a close-up here, I'll show you that real quick. So you can see there's a little uh, button here that switches from locked to unlock. Obviously, when it's on the, the rifle, you want to have it in the locked position, so it's nice and snug against the rifle. But to remove the mount, you're going to unlock it, push it forward, okay, which is pushing this piece out of the back, all right, freeing it to be slid off of the light itself. So this post that's on the side is actually part of the light. All right, what is nice with uh, both the Odin Mini as well as the original Odin is you can take the pressure switch off and the mount. Now you have just a regular handheld flashlight. Um, but keep in mind, it's not gonna be all that comfortable you know, with this rail piece that's here. Next up here is the Olight Odin. This is very similar to the Odin Mini. The light is physically longer. This one uh, does have a different battery. It's a 21700. The charging and mounting system work exactly the same, uh, as is the uh, pressure switch. This has a max output of 2,000 lumens, and this sells for $159.95. Last up here is the Streamlight Protac HLX. This sells online between $120 and $150. If you just wanted the flashlight with a regular clicky switch on the back, um, that would be around the $120 price tag, but if you do want the pressure switch, that whole system is about $150. All right, um, this also has a Picatinny style mount, has a very large, easy to use knob on here. Uh, keep in mind, if you don't have the pressure switch and you just have the tail uh, switch on here and you want to use this, you know, on the light and off the light, this mount is not removable. So it's quite large to just use it, you know, individually, you know, in your hand uh, as a hand light as opposed to just a, a weapons mounted light. Um, but this one uh, has a max output of a thousand lumens. This is running on a 2600 battery and the battery itself is rechargeable with a port on the side which i'll show you in just a second here all right so you take the battery out and you put your usb cable directly into the side of the battery that's how you're going to charge this light so now i just want to go over the uh, function on all these lights first up is the through night tw20 to use this you're just going to be using the pressure pad there's no other way to turn the light on or off so this is a dedicated weapons light so you want to do is uh, just push it once for constant on and let go, just a quick press. Uh, or if you hold it down on the pressure pad, it's going to be a, a momentary on. All right. So as long as you're holding this, it's going to stay on. As soon as you let go, it'll shut off. So if you want just quick light, you let go. Or if you just want to keep it on and then maybe reposition your hands on the rifle, you could do that as well. 
very simple to use. And if you notice, once this is on, you do have a battery indicator, okay, which is opposite of the mount. So you can easily see that if your battery is going to need to be charged uh, before usage. That's very important, especially if it's a weapons light. Uh, you don't want to go into any kind of shooting situation and think your, your light might die. So it's nice to have that visual uh, battery indicator on the outside there. So next up here is the Odin Mini from Olight. Also has a pressure switch, which is very simple to use, same as uh, a lot of different weapons lights. Quick tap to just keep a constant on or hold it down for your momentary on. All right, the uh, difference between this one and the through night as well as the stream light is that if you detach the um, pressure switch on the back, with or without the mount, doesn't really matter, you can use this as a hand light, okay? And while you have it as a hand light, if you do a soft press, we have our low and then push it all the way in, it goes to high. So you do have the low function when it's off of the light uh, or if you're just not using the pressure switch at all. Um, same thing, momentary on, when you let go, it goes off, all right? Or push it all the way in, let go, it goes off, or just a quick press for constant on. So pretty simple system, very easy to use. Um, but you know, again, with the pressure switch, it's, it's just like most lights. You know, a quick press goes on, long hold is your momentary on. Next up is the original Olight Odin, and it works exactly the same. Quick press to turn it on. This one buzzed because it is low on power. If I am quiet, maybe you can hear that. All right, that's letting me know that I don't have full charge on this light. But anyway, um, long press is going to be your momentary on. All right, so as soon as you let go, the light goes off. Now, before I move on to the stream light, I did want to show that these are an interchangeable modular system. All right, so these magnetic um, pressure switches work on either light, okay? It is completely modular, but it is nice that both of the mounts work with both of these lights. You can see the system is exactly the same and how it functions. So if you wanted the M-lock, let's say, on your original Odin, it locks on just fine. And if you wanted the Picatinny mount on your uh, Odin Mini, that works as well. All right, so it just depends on whatever your preference is, but it's important to note that the uh, Olight Odin Mini does not come with the Picatinny rail. It only comes with the M-Lock. All right, so that's something you have to purchase separately. And last up, we have the Streamlight ProTac HLX. All right, so this pressure pad, if you notice, is a little bit different. First off, it doesn't have the rail mount piece on here. All right, this comes with like a double-sided tape. Um, so to me, it's a downside because I know a lot of people, especially firearms enthusiasts, have multiple rifles, uh, multiple weapon systems. They want to sometimes change things up. So having to use a sticker, you know, it makes it a little bit less uh, convenient than, you know, swapping lights back and forth easily. Something to note. However, I do like the setup on here, all right? There's a dedicated button for your constant on. So it literally just clicks in. It's very audible. You can feel that. So you just click that on. Or if you want your momentary, you're gonna push down and hold on the pad and let go. There is also a, uh, a third feature here with the pad. If you double click, you have strobe, all right? So double click and hold that. It'll stay on strobe until you let go. So just a nice feature. Um, as far as the mount goes, very simple. Again, I really do like this very large knob, all right? There's also a slot cut into it. So once you crank this down on the rifle, again, you could take, um, you know, a small thin coin or screwdriver and really get that to lock on very tightly onto your rail to make sure it's not gonna move around when you're shooting but very simple operation on the stream light. All right, so now we're gonna head outside, check out these lights. I'm gonna uh, do two different um, positions for the demo. The first one's up against a uh, wall. Um, this is gonna represent more of an indoor light situation where you're shining against a large flat surface. I'm gonna be about 10 feet away or so to give you that perspective on these weapons lights. If you happen to put this on a rifle and use it indoors, that's what you can expect as far as the, the throw and the spill. But I'm also going to give you a different perspective uh, thrown out a little bit into woods. So you can see how this is going to look at a little bit more distance. Uh, that shot will probably give you about a 20 to 30 yard uh, view of what the lights are capable of. All right. So first up is the through night TW20. All right. So there it is. We're about 10 feet or so from the uh, wall there. So we're going to go up and down. Let that focus a second. Right, left, and right. All right, the next up here is the Olight Odin Mini. Go up, and down, and then 
left and right. Okay, next up is the regular Odin. Go up. Down. Left and right. And last up is the Streamlight Protec. All right, so up. Let that focus a second. Down. Left and right. So I do these comparisons so you can see the coloration, you know, the hot spot, how much spill there is. So it's pretty consistent since all this testing is done in the same area so you can go back and compare them to other flashlights as well all right so here's some beam shots in a different area all right starting with the through night tw20 this way you can see how it reaches out a little bit better so we'll go up and down and left and right This will give you a better idea of the spill as well as how much it throws. Next up here is the Olight Odin Mini. Go up, down, and left and right. Then we have the original Olight Odin. All right, up. Down, left and right. And finally, we have the Streamlight Protec. All right, so there you go. Now you can see how these lights stack up against each other. Every light has its pros and cons. Um, right off the bat, the through night TW20 is the cheapest by far. At $80, it's almost half the price of the original Odin and the, um, the Streamlight Protac if you got the pressure switch uh, kit, the whole setup there. Uh, it's also the brightest, all right, at 2,532 lumens. Now, as far as the Olights go, I really like the, the systems, the modular system with not only the mounts, so you can swap between different mounts. I like that the mounts are uh, able to stay on the rifle and I can take the light off as well as disconnect the pressure switch, whether I want to maybe charge the light quickly uh, or if I want to use it in my hand outside of the rifle. So it's just a really nice feature, uh, but they are much more expensive. So you are paying for those extra conveniences. As far as the uh, Streamlight goes, again, I mean, I like the Streamlight. Um, I like Streamlight as a company. This particular light, I think the advantage is really in the, um, the pressure switch, just the style. But again, that sticker situation as opposed to just popping it off the rail, it's definitely inconvenient. Um, it's also a very cool white LED, which I'm not super fond of. I don't mind super white or very neutral type white colors. I think I probably personally prefer some of the warmer LEDs, but this one's just a little bit on the bluish side to me. So it's just a little bit distracting. But as I mentioned, all four lights do have their pros and cons, so obviously you would pick the best one for your situation. I think these would all be extremely functional on any rifle up to probably 50 yards or so. After 50 yards, I don't think any of these are capable of really producing enough light to get clean shots. Um, but, you know, they're also much smaller lights. There's other weapon systems that have more powerful flashlights, but they're also a lot bigger, more cumbersome, and of course heavier. And once you start adding a bunch of different accessories onto your guns, you know, again, there's, there's pros and cons to all those situations. But if you really want to reach out there, then your gun becomes super heavy and uh, less mobile. So these are a very happy medium, in my opinion, because there's very small weapons lights you can throw on there that weigh nothing, but they're not as capable as all of these lights. So that's it for this one. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the video. If you want to get in on Through Night's free giveaways, be sure to comment on this video as well as subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.